I'm going to present uh, on the project Energy Efficiency Watch, which is an EACI finance project. Um, I'm Daniel Becker from ECOFIS, and I'm part of the team uh, doing this scientific uh, um, part of that project. Uh, what I'm going to present is um, uh, a few snapshots from the so-called NEEPS, so the National Energy Efficiency Action Plans, um, delivered by the member states under the uh, Energy Efficiency Directive. Um, and those snapshots will be coming from both the screening uh, we are currently doing and an energy expert survey uh, in all EU27 member states. Okay, so um, this will start with uh, what is our task to better understand what we are actually doing, what our approach is, and then uh, I will give you some pre preliminary results, as I said, both coming from the screening and from the expert survey. So just in brief, um, many of you may have heard that already. What is a NEEP? Um, just a few uh, things that are important to understand. Uh, the former Energy Efficiency Directive, the ESD, uh, requires the member states to, to submit three sets of uh, NEEPs. One was delivered in 2007. The second uh, we are currently working at uh, was delivered in 2011. And a third one to come in 2014. And um, so um, uh, this is a process, this is work in process on stimulating policy making on energy efficiency in the member states. And uh, what is important to uh, mention at this stage is that uh, there is some guidance provided, so some attempts to standardize the process, but still we are in a phase where it's not obligatory to use uh, a template provided, so there are large differences among those NEEPs. We are not talking about a homogeneous type of document. Uh, the current variation is from 14 to above 300 pages. That just uh, uh, to mention at this stage. The typical contents of uh, the NEEPs are um, the um, setting of national savings target for 210 and 216, usually 9%. Then uh, the calculation of the uh, savings, uh, evaluation methods, uh, and then policy and measure, policies and measures per sector, which then is in more or less detail, and we will have a closer look at that. Um, and then reporting on specific requirements, such as the role of the public sector, um, then advice and information, uh, contributions from energy companies, so the, su the supply side actually, and uh, very important, uh, the market for energy services. So that should be ideally referred to in a good need. What is then our task? So our key product uh, will be to be released in summer 2013, um, a comprehensive report consisting of 27 national reports. And uh, the objectives of uh, this and the whole projects are to highlight strengths and weaknesses of uh, the national energy efficiency policies, so about the process of policy making in the member states and related to the ESD. We will highlight good practice examples and implementation deficits, and we will identify policy gaps and give some recommendations how to overcome them. Our sources of information are, as I already said, a screening of the NEEPs, then a survey um, which goes along with in-depth interviews with selected national experts. Um, the approach we are using is we will look first if there are effective sectoral policy packages be because we consider it very important to, uh, for the policy making process that, that this is part of an integral package that uh, the parts fit well together. Um, then is there a government's uh, framework? For example, are there institutions, structures, mechanism uh, that facilitate the making and the smooth implementation of sectorial energy efficiency policies? Um, 
so what we will not do is actually uh, uh, we will not check the target achievement or the correct calculation of the savings that is not in our scope we will just look into those documents and have that accompanied by uh, expert statements in the survey and of course we will not double uh, the Commission's official assessment of the NEEPS. This is just to uh, give you an idea what uh, the full overview of the results will look like. So what we've done, these are columns for the countries, these are the sectors, and then we've made a, um, a scoring um, system uh, where the countries reach uh, points so starting from half a point up to two that is the full scoring you can reach that was just done for um, calculation uh, modalities so uh, which uh, how many points you have is actually uh, we, we've set that to uh, get a better overview and uh, in the lines you see the single measures we are looking at so if we do a cross-country analysis, uh, this is just the preliminary uh, stage we are in now, um, <clears throat> we will, uh, for example, um, if we look at the building sector, we can compare, and where you see the bars um, dark blue, there you can say this is where we've assessed that uh, in the NEEPS, countries have addressed all policy issues that are relevant for um, one of the uh, topics uh, we uh, mentioned here in these lines. So what you see is on the building sector um, a mixed picture which is in some countries rather elaborate which is uh, explained basically as mentioned before by a long history of uh, buildings policies in those countries while we have others like Portugal, where the coverage is still um, rather weak. If we look at transport, so this is to compare sectors. When you look at buildings, then you see uh, there is more dark blue than in transport. So um, one thing that is shown is that there, are, there is very different sector coverage. And what we can say here is there is again a mixed picture but the weakest sector of all is uh, the transport sector with some exemptions but uh, on a sector overview this is what provides the um, uh, the screening uh, there are huge differences there is also some good practice I've picked three here just to give you an overview so um, uh, a new member state good practice in buildings Again, I have to say this is not meaning implementation. This is just what is the information given in the NEEP, and those are not policies that are actually implemented, but this is what policies have been scheduled to be implemented according to the NEEP. So if we take that in this NEEP, the policies are going to be implemented, then here this is to be seen as a good practice in this context. <clears throat> So, for example, um, this is uh, forming a package of, uh, for example, uh, uh, regulatory policies, incentives, financial instruments, etc. Looking into transport, this is very interesting. There, um, we had this is one of the very few examples of good practice to be found in transport. Again, um, not necessarily impr implemented. There may be. Uh, instruments in here that are partly implemented that is left to the member states but not all uh, that is a bit difficult to understand sometimes <clears throat> so here we have the full scope so we have a strong focus on improving the conditions for public transport walking and cycling so we are looking is there a good overarching uh, coverage of the sector and are the single instruments uh, filled with meaningful uh, measures. So adequacy of package, that is the uh, comprehensive character, that is the lowest bar. And we have as a third example uh, the public sector in Belgium. Here uh, we have uh, not given full storage 
because we said there is a lack of a clear target and a vision, <coughs> but in the um, single aspects like uh, role model for the public sector, etc., there are good examples. For example, uh, in the NEEP is the building of 25 new passive schools, etc., then mobility management, public procurement, etc. So that is qu uh, pretty well tackled in the NEEP. Public ESCO is in here as well. So, preliminary conclusions. What are the main messages of the screening? Uh, that is, as already said, some sectors are addressed already by a good set of measures, but some, like transport, very weakly. Um, the reason for this is basically that some states uh, started very early, sometimes 20, 30 years back, with some first approaches, and that pays off, of course, in this context. <coughs> Then there are sectoral policy packages, for example, for appliances in buildings, but s in some member states they are, in fact, to a large extent based on uh, EU legislation. So that is not coming from genuine policies, but it's rather uh, implementation of uh, EU legislation that is there anyway. <coughs> um, the majority of member states, so that is a general weakness uh, you, can, you can find here, have not adopted long-term strategies or targets. And um, we see that the economic downturn has an effect um, on EE policies in several member states, so cutting budgets, etc. So there we can see what many of my fellow speakers have said that uh, energy efficiency is often regarded still as a burden that is then cut down when the economic situation is less good. <coughs> uh, so, and the target achievement is, on the other hand, also in many cases due to economic recession and not to policies. Um, what can be concluded? Again, in the second round of the NEEPS, uh, the documents are very heterogeneous, both in quality and size. In total, to give a good message here, um, they are an improvement compared to the first round. So what we can see is that there is a learning process on policy making in the EU, which I think is very important. Implementation is a different story still, but um, issues are at least addressed by policies. Um, so and uh, the EU member states will now come up with more policy approaches, and you could, uh, still can, uh, see them, see energy efficiency policies lag behind, uh, for example, renewables policies. So in that sense, that is, I think, an important uh, improvement. Um, still, we can see how important it is if a country has a, a good institutional framework in place that facilitates much more the design and uh, subsequent uh, uh, implementation of, uh, well, the requirements of the NEEPs and policies. And so, in summary, we still see a lot of implementation challenges following the NEEPs. And what is still open um, is, for example, uh, tackling st uh, stakeholder motivation sufficiently. That is leading to the next step uh, to the survey. So just a remark here, the ESCO, the energy services uh, coverage in most NEEPs is still very weakly developed, while ESCOs are a key for uh, really changing business models. So that is actually something to be, uh, yeah, to be tackled in the future. So coming to the survey, this, uh, these slides were on the NEEP screening, now uh, a bit separate at this stage from that is the survey. We've just this week got the first results from the survey. So the objective was to, in parallel to just reading the NEEPs submitted by the member states, get views of uh, experts and uh, other important stakeholders on the actual process on energy efficiency policies in their respective countries uh, compared to the situation under the NEEPS, uh, under the first round of NEEPS. <clears throat> so, more than 700 experts from all member states have been consulted. Um, 
and the survey consists of a quantitative part where 655 completed questionnaires have been taken into account and a qualitative survey where in addition um, extensive oral interviews with three experts per member states uh, have been led and uh, the survey was carried out by one of our partners which is the uh, Oberösterreichische Energiesparverband with contributions also by ECEEE, Federen, Energie Cité, so part of our consortium. So this is then the general picture that uh, the survey gives and here below, I don't know whether all of you can read it, um, these were <coughs> the um, indications uh, the interviewed people gave on uh, how do you rank the progress in energy efficiency policies in your country in the last three years. And it is ranging from no or very little progress to then orange, a few additional policies, then a range of additional policies or many additional policies. <coughs> so you see the red in uh, the experts view, red or orange, uh, is dominating. But uh, in some countries, for example, uh, Estonia, <coughs> uh, experts are quite positive on uh, the improvements made. The next question was, how do you see the improvements in actual implementation in the last three years? And here we see the different picture, that uh, red is far more dominating, which is pretty clear. Um, but then, this is very interesting, um, what do you think is the impact of ambitious energy efficiency policies? And um, here, everybody is very positive and says um, it in the, in the uh, top picture, it supports the competitiveness of uh, EU industry, 67% are of that opinion. They, it, it creates jobs, it stimulates innovation in business, and only a minority um, say it doesn't or um <coughs> just a bit. So uh, concluding from this, preliminary conclusion from this is um, the stakeholders that have participated in the survey are of the opinion that the policy approach should be much stronger than it is actually because there is a huge amount of uh, yeah, uh, uh, benefits to raise actually from energy efficiency and our task in the coming months will be <coughs> to bring the survey results and the NEEP screening together in the final results and I can announce at this stage that next week uh, in Brussels on the 28th, um, the Energy Efficiency Watch will give an extensive presentation of the survey, also in Brussels, and you're invited to join this. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very interesting presentation. Uh, I was wondering, when you were talking about scoring the, the various member states, if you were familiar with the work that ACEEE has been doing in the U.S. with the state-based scorecards, and they've been very successful. And can you say something about how it compares and whether you expect similar success? Um, it's not the same here we are doing. It's just um, the... Um, it relates basically to uh, what I said in the beginning, um, to... Um, uh, these aspects that we try to identify to which extent uh, effective sectorial policy packages are made and uh, how government's framework is tackled. So this is actually uh, only understandable from the project itself. It's not scorecards for the countries saying who is best in class. That is not the aim here, but the aim is to understand how is the process of policy making in the EU going and which potentials are there to uh, get good ideas from single member states and then have mutual learning among them. So that is actually um, the, the scope here. Uh, while you stress the fact that um, uh, the policy development is actually uh, going in a positive way, you also uh, mentioned that at the same time the implementation well, is not uh, going in the same rate. Uh, on the contrary, what view did you get on the reasons for this? Um, 
Well, one follows the other. So first you have to have good ideas on which policies you could introduce and then implementation follows. So that is in a way natural. Uh, on the other hand, of course, um, what we've seen in, the, uh, in evaluating the, the NEEP-1 process in the end is that we said often um, the NEEPs are too vague in terms of policies are defined or are mentioned, but it's not clear, for example, how these policies are going to be financed, etc. So that is a long way. So there are many things still to be uh, put together to make the whole thing work. That is basically the answer for this phenomenon. And going a step further, what I briefly mentioned, I think um, many policies still don't sufficiently answer perhaps uh, the question how attractive is it for stakeholders to, let's say, shift their business models? So uh, the, the weak coverage of ESCOs, for example, uh, is, a, is a point here.